Sue and I have been best friends for over a decade now, and we've had a great friendship. We tell each other everything, and even my boyfriend and her husband get along swimmingly. A couple of months ago, we met up for a girls' night, and Sue confessed that she stopped taking her birth control without telling her husband, Jay. The thing is, aside from this being a messed up thing to do to anyone, Jay is adamantly child-free. Like if someone tries to make him hold a baby, he'll put it down on the nearest flat surface and walk away kind of adamantly child-free. So naturally, when Sue told me about her plan, the first words out of my mouth were, dude, that's messed up. And she started crying and begging me not to tell Jay. I told her I wouldn't. But when Jay came over to borrow some tools from my boyfriend, I ended up telling him everything. And it went about as well as you'd expect. Now he's filed for divorce and living in our guest room. Sue and I are, needless to say, no longer best friends. She called me an evil witch who ruined her life out of jealousy and then blocked me on everything. I thought I was completely in the right at the beginning of this, but now I'm starting to feel guilty. I feel like I should have tried to convince her to tell Jay how she felt or get counseling or something first. Am I the idiot here? Not the idiot. She destroyed her own life and marriage. And frankly, you would have been an absolute idiot to keep this from him. His immediate move towards divorce shows you how strong his feelings about this were. You saved him. She did not deserve to be saved from her own crime. I get that you promised and then broke that promise, but in this case, it was necessary. Not the idiot. You just saved her from making the biggest mistake of her life. You just saved Jay from a life he doesn't want. Yes, you might feel guilty because of a friendship, but she's clearly not the greatest person if she can do that. But Jay should have a vasectomy. It's not fair that his partners have to take birth control while he chose not to have children. Sue played stupid games and won stupid prizes. Yes, you could have spoken to her first and encouraged her to speak to Jay or seek therapy, but what she did could have drastically affected his life. She was very much the idiot for doing that. You did the right thing. He was adamantly child-free, and for her to bring a child into this world with a dad who didn't want it is not fair to the baby. She's better off finding someone who wants a baby. I disagree, OP. It was not a case of wrong and right. It's a case of sticking your nose in somebody else's business. You would have been 200% right if Sue and Jay were kids and you told their parents, but the two of them are adults with a relationship that you truly don't have all knowledge of. When you told Jay, you basically demonstrated to Sue you value Jay more than her. So yes, she is right to dump you. As far as Jay goes and the fallout, well, what did you think would happen? I doubt you'll ever recover either one of their friendships. Of course it was a case of wrong or right. Sue was wrong and was planning on deceiving her husband and committing a crime against him. OP was completely in the right. OP, you have saved a man from a life he would have considered a nightmare and put a stop to someone's frankly evil plan. Also, if you hadn't said anything, 100%, Jay would have divorced her anyway. If you don't want kids and your partner decides to keep one, you don't stay. You just don't. You did the right thing, OP. Sue brought this upon herself, and she should reap all the consequences of her horrid actions. When I was 18, I found out I was pregnant with my boyfriend's 21 child. Although I had only just graduated, I was so excited to start a family with him. When I told him the news, he initially seemed excited, but he grew less and less interested in our child and me as time went on. Two months into the pregnancy, I broke things off with him for two reasons. Number one, he was not paying hardly any attention to me. He spent most of his free time with his friends, and I started to feel like I was no longer a priority to him. Number two, he started drinking. He would have a drink here and there, but he was never a heavy drinker. He would come home wasted, and it was honestly annoying. Taking care of myself was hard enough, and taking care of myself and my drinking boyfriend was too much. To my knowledge, he didn't take our breakup very hard, and I was glad. We decided to stay friends to give our child the best life possible. I grew up without my father, and that's the last thing I wanted for my baby. About a month later, I met a really nice guy. We hit it off immediately and started dating not too long after that. He treated me excellent, and I was so grateful to have found someone that loved me the way he did. Throughout my pregnancy, my ex was pretty involved. His interest in our child grew a lot after we broke up, 
which made me happy. I was glad to know he cared. I had planned for him and my sister to be in the delivery room. However, he showed up wasted on my delivery day. I was angry. I made the last minute decision to have my boyfriend in the delivery room instead of my ex. I told him that I did not want someone who had been drinking in with me while I was giving birth. He replied telling me that the alcohol will wear off and he deserves to be in there considering how great he's been to me my whole pregnancy. I told him that I wouldn't change my mind and he proceeded to yell at me saying how it's just the hormones and that I'll regret having a man that I just met in there while I give birth. Over the past seven years, we've been able to maintain a, for the most part, healthy co-parenting relationship. I am now married to my then boyfriend and I have no regrets about having him in there with me, but my ex is still sour about me not allowing him to be in the delivery room. He is now infertile and is mad I ruined his only chance at being in the delivery room during the birth of his child. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. No one who has been drinking is coming in the delivery room with a newborn child in me. That's his own fault for drinking. Actions have consequences. OP childbirth is a medical procedure and not a spectator event. And it's your medical procedure and no one else's, not even the child's unless something goes wrong. You are, of course, welcome to invite other people into your medical procedure if you want. Still, they are solely there to support you. Not the idiot. It's his fault for coming in drinking. That's completely on him, especially if it was close to your due date. He shouldn't be praised for being good during your pregnancy. That's his one obligation as the father. You're giving birth, so it's 100% up to you who gets to be in the room with him. Gosh, I'm glad it worked out with your new man. Yes, he showed up wasted to the delivery room. Let's stop and analyze this statement for a moment. Your ex thought in a moment of clarity, Hey, my kid is getting ready to be born. So yeah, it would be a totally awesome time to get blitzed and shows up to the hospital that way. Yeah, how did you do that? Did you force feed him alcohol? Oh, you didn't? He made his own choice. He ruined his only chance all by himself. Well then, congrats on your marriage to a better partner and also congrats on maintaining good co-parenting despite your ex's sour grapes. You're doing fine. My son, 23, has been dating his girlfriend, 23, for two and a half years. I think she is a nice girl. She is really good for my son and is always pleasant and polite to us. However, she can be emotional and sensitive, and I worry that my son puts her feelings before his own. Girlfriend was supposed to graduate in May 2020, but never had a graduation ceremony because of global issue. I know she was really upset and devastated over the end of her college experience and no celebration. However, recently she found out that they will be scheduling a graduation ceremony this fall. When girlfriend told my son, he was very excited and told me the news. I told him that the ceremony is the same day as his cousin, my niece's 24 wedding. His cousin deserves to have her family there to support her. She and my son were close as kids, so she asked him to do a reading and he agreed. Girlfriend has met our extended family a few times, but she isn't close with them. When my son told his girlfriend about the wedding, she was very upset and heartbroken. She told him she needs him there to see her walk the stage, and it was bad enough that it wasn't a typical graduation. Girlfriend and my son talked about skipping the wedding ceremony and going to the reception after girlfriend's graduation is done. My son spoke to his cousin, and she said she's okay with him missing the ceremony. I think his girlfriend is selfish and I cannot believe that she's making him abandon his family when they aren't even married. I was so angry I didn't talk to my son for a week and now my girlfriend is also upset at my reaction. Am I the idiot for being mad he would abandon family for a girlfriend? My son and husband are upset with my reaction and think I overreacted. I think it's expected to pick family first, but they say he should be there for his girlfriend. Edit. I do like his girlfriend, I think she's nice, but I'm worried about how much my son does for her. Whenever she is offended or upset by something, he jumps to comfort her and do whatever she wants to be happy. Seems like she is always upset about something. I worry he is only going to her graduation because she was upset. You are the idiot. The cousin is okay with it. Your son is okay with it. His girlfriend is okay with it. What is your role in the entire story? None. Cut it out. 
Oh, and most people would attend the graduation of a partner over the wedding of a cousin. For real, son is a grown adult taking care of his business as he sees fit. So mind your own business, lady. Everyone actually involved with the situation behaved like mature, reasonable adults. They realized there was a conflict, talked about it, and found a nice compromise. That's like the best you can hope for. OP sounds so dramatic and like a future just no mother-in-law. You are the idiot. You should be proud that your son found a compromise that satisfied everybody. You should also be proud of him for being sensitive and attentive to his girlfriend's feelings. You somehow raised a good kid, despite these short-sighted inclinations that you seem to have. I think OP does not realize that the son is already an adult that can make decisions for himself. Also, calling the girlfriend sensitive and easily offended when the OP is getting sensitive and offended over something they have nothing to do with is a bit much. I think OP sees themselves in the girlfriend. Either he or she hates that or thinks they are being replaced by the girlfriend. This reaches back to old drama that I have to keep brief. Three years ago, my 20 female sister, 30, got married. She and Hubs live on a modest income, but they needed to pay the full cost of the wedding, no help. So they both worked two jobs to cover everything. Our stepmom, 55, has been in our lives for 15 years. She's a gossip, gives unsolicited advice on everything happening in your life, and is overall pushy and abrasive. The whole family tolerates her, but she's too irritating for anyone to be her friend except my dad. She was at the wedding, which was perfect until the reception. It was a fish slash steak buffet. In short, many guests were waiting for the line to go down before dishing up, but the line wasn't shortening because some people who ate first went back for seconds. There were about 20 people who didn't get entrees. My sister was livid and she went around the reception hall in her white gown, apologizing to people who didn't eat. The thing about sis, she often goes straight for the nuclear option when mad. No diplomacy, no hostages. She eventually took up the mic and made a whole room announcement again, apologizing to guests who missed out because of inconsiderate people. Then she added, for example, stepmom, who lives in a million dollar house, but still felt the need to take one steak for now and two more to shove in her purse for later. Yep, stepmom had wrapped two free steaks and napkins to go. Stepmom left pretty fast. Dad was furious at sis. Most of the family said it was an over-the-top response, but that stepmom also had it coming. Jokes still get cracked over it three years later, and stepmom hates it. She never apologized, and in fact thinks sis owes her an apology. Yesterday was my grandfather's memorial service. He passed away in January, but we couldn't have the funeral then. After I spoke, I stumbled in my new heels. I walked it off, no big deal. Everyone went to aunt's house for lunch, where stepmom kept bragging on me. Hey, if it isn't Surefoot, do we need to play Bambi, let you learn how to walk? Maybe flats would have been a better choice for a funeral. Hmm. I finally had enough and said, I'm just glad I didn't do something to really embarrass myself, like steal free food from the mouths of hungry people. Sis replies, yeah, that would have made you look like a total idiot. This caused a major argument, which resulted in stepmom leaving in tears, dad yelling at us for not accepting her as family, and everyone else quietly shuffling food around on their plates and smirking. After they left, the rest of the family supported sis and me. I don't think I'm in the wrong here, because stepmom was the one who pushed my buttons first. But maybe I should have left her indiscretion in the past. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. The textbook definition of can dish it out but can't take it. What kind of monster gives someone crap on the day of a beloved family member's memorial service? Yikes! I am so sorry your dad brought this creature into your life. Revenge, unlike stolen steaks, is a dish best served cold and not out of a handbag. You are not the idiot. Stepmother is a classic bully, and like most bullies, she can't stand a rhetorical punch in the nose. So continue standing up to her. And remember, the best defense is to be offensive. Also, the sister is the hero I want to be in every story here. OP, your father married a narcissistic person with whom he is entwined. Who steals free steaks when others didn't get any? Who thinks it's okay to denigrate stepchildren? Your dad is also the a-hole for letting his wife berate and belittle you all for years. 
Your dad and wife deserve each other. No one owes stepmom any sort of apology. She can let her crocodile tears flow. I, nearly adult female, have been saving up for a Nintendo Switch for a while. I live in a household with my mom, my dad, and my little half-brother, Zach, tween, who was a child my dad had with another woman when my parents were briefly separated for 10 months. Long story. My dad has primary custody of Zach, and he lives with us basically full-time. My parents have a pretty strict rule that they will never buy us video games or anything video game related. Growing up, I never had video games because my parents refused to spend their money on games. Zach loves video games, but my dad refuses to buy them for him, and his mom doesn't buy games for him either. Since I started working a casual job, my parents told me I was free to buy video games with my own money. So I ordered a Nintendo Switch online, and it arrived three days ago, on my brother's birthday. Zach knew I was buying a Switch, and he was really excited. I told him that we could play some multiplayer games together, but that it was ultimately my Switch and I wouldn't lend it to him. I didn't know at the time, but he ran to mom and dad talking about how unfair it was that I was getting a Switch and he couldn't play it. I think my parents felt sorry for him, so when the package arrived on Zach's birthday, my dad pulled me aside and told me he wanted me to share the Switch with Zach. I told my dad I would rather return my Nintendo Switch and get the money back than share the Switch with Zach because he can't share things fairly. My dad put his foot down and told me it was his house, his rules. So I decided to keep the Switch in the package and return it because I can always buy one when I eventually move out. The problem is now Zach was excited for the Switch, especially when it arrived on his birthday. And now that I'm returning it, he's acting like a little kid who learned that Christmas was canceled. He's angry with me that I would rather return the Switch than share it with him. Apparently I ruined his birthday because he was depressed and angry the whole day and didn't even want to blow the candles out on his cake. Obviously, it would have been better if the Switch didn't arrive on his birthday, but that's out of my control. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your money, your choice. Your parents spent your entire life refusing to buy you video games and consoles, but tell you that you can purchase them with your own money. When you do, they want to dictate that you share them with your half-brother? They do not get to dictate what you do with something that you purchase with your own money. The wild part is, OP was willing to essentially share her Switch on her own terms. She was going to let him occasionally play multiplayer with her, but established it's her console. Little bro felt it was unfair and told the parents. Instead of the parents teaching him a good lesson on respecting others' boundaries and wishes, they decided to punish OP by switching the rules. Not the idiot. The nerve on Daddy Dearest to enforce a strict no video games policy until he had the chance to share something you purchase for yourself. The whole his house, his rules thing doesn't apply to other people's property. His rules don't apply to stuff that you buy with your own money. Your brother can't claim ownership of something just because he wants it. If your parents think it's unfair of you to share it with him, they could, and I know this is a crazy idea, buy him a switch for his birthday. Honestly, I applaud your maturity, and I'm sorry that you're losing the chance to use something you enjoy because your family cannot allow you to set boundaries. This could have been a great way to teach your brother the fun aspect of having to work and or save money and instead turned into a lesson for you that you can't bring fun things into your family's home.